All right, guys, so we will call the meeting to order at 6.06. Are there any adjustments to the agenda tonight? <coughs> Approve the minutes of Tuesday, November 28th. It was a regular meeting. Do I have a motion? I move approval. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Is there any discussion on the minutes? All right. Hearing none, so moved. Um, board correspondence. Do we have anything? Does anybody know any? Anybody have any correspondence we need to talk about? Okay. Public comment. I don't think there's any public on. Is there? Nope. Um, and then reports to the board. Jamie. Um, so you, you have my superintendent report in hand. Uh, I just wanted to say that our in-service yesterday was great. We had received a lot of really positive feedback uh, from our faculty and staff that did work. Um, yesterday with uh, Dr. Van Len, um, and we were able to uh, differentiate PD. We were all together, faculty, in the morning. And then there was some specific uh, directed professional development for our middle and high school faculty uh, in the afternoon. And then also some elementary teachers were able to work uh, with Dr. Uh, Van Lant. And then some faculties did break off and went back to buildings because they had specific work that they were focused on um, at the building level in the afternoon. So it was, it was a good day. Thus far, we've received really positive feedback uh, in regards to that. And then what I wanted to um, add is just kind of like just in a little overall update a, a little bit about act 127 but also just talk about the legislative session open today and kicked off and just some of the things that i think that we should uh, be prepared for them to start to take up in regards to uh, education and so uh, in regards to act 127 i say i would say the big news that we received here in the last 24 hours is um, our common level of appraisals uh, for all the towns across the state and the 10 towns of WRVSU, uh, which in general, I would say I haven't looked at all the towns in the state by, by quick, quick glance. Certainly over 90% have seen pretty significant drops of more than 5% uh, in each town, and certainly uh, all of our towns have seen over that 5% drop um, in common level of appraisal. So I think it is, it's important for everyone to understand that when we talk about education tax rate being capped, it's, the edu it's your equalized tax rate prior to the CLA yeah. that's capped, okay? It's not, the, it's not your tax rate after the CLA runs through. That common level of appraisal is specific to each town to ensure that each town is paying tax at a tax, like they are paying their fair share of taxes based on what houses are selling at and being valued at versus what they were appraised for whenever your last appraisal occurred. So they, they're not capping those, okay? The tax rate that's capped is the equalized tax rate, that final number prior to running through the CLA. So I will say one of the things um, that I, I think probably all my colleagues and business managers and I think most board members are a little frustrated with, I would say that I don't think any of us necessarily could have predicted the CLAs to drop as much as they have. I will tell you as I start to look at tax rates uh, across the state and talking to fellow colleagues now that have run these new CLAs through, even with that 5% um, cap on your equalized tax rate, when the governor starts saying things like 17.5% and things of that nature, for, for some of our towns, that's going to be true just on the CLA alone, if, even if we had a flat budget. Okay, so I just, what I'll say to you is, is that it is going, um, it's going to be one of these things. We had to do it last year in some of your towns, but in all your towns this year, we really have to have folks understand that they're their taxes are going to be impacted greatly due to not having appraised uh, in our towns, in some of our towns, in a very long time. And so I plan to actually talk about that in my letters uh, to the 
to the public. I think we're going to need it in our presentations um, because that is one of the driving factors. And I'll give you an example as I was talking to someone today is like uh, in the district I was uh, I worked previously, there was there was a uh, property that had been pretty run down um, that, you know, I would have never thought would have sold for one hundred and fifty thousand just sold for one hundred and fifty thousand a couple weeks ago. And I just share that with you to say that is that is what's the driving force of the CLA dropping is that that property would have probably been appraised for prior when they initially did appraisals, and for some of our towns it's it's prior to 2010, even and so that if a property would have been appraised at 75,000, it's ensuring that they are now paying for what that property would have been worth, without having been reappraised. So if let's say you went through reappraisal, your tax sheet would actually show that your tax rate may go down because the COA went up and anytime the COA is over 100, it actually will drop the tax rate off of that final equalized tax rate. Um, but you'd be paying at, a t your, at the tax rate at a higher value in the home, right? So when they reappraise, everyone's home's values are gonna rise and so, yes, your tax rate may have decreased, but you're going to pay that tax rate at a much higher value appraised home. Because remember, that tax rate, when we give it to you, we say this is based on your a property up at $100,000. So budgets that we've looked at so far. We've used last year's CLAs because right. we had nothing else to use. Right. So a lot of what we talked about last night, where our budget with that could be really it's not going to be different. So here's the thing. All I can control is the equalized tax rate. In order for us to drop our taxes down past what some, our, some of our 5% caps are, we would need to be looking at cutting budgets from flat, meaning no increases. Like in some districts, I would need to like decrease your budget from this current year to next which would mean significant layoffs, which is not something we had talked about. No, no, I was I, I just trying to wrap um, my head around it. A couple other shoes. One is the yields, and you were very pessimistic about, um, well, how those are going to come in. and uh, Well, we've got the 5%. We've got the, the tax yeah. cap we got a cap, holds cap. the yield. Yep. Right, so they did drop the yield, but the yield's not going to raise any more funds if you stay under the ten percent threshold, yeah. uh, which we've been trying really hard to do. That's one of the reasons we did that, right? So the yield did drop significantly. As long as we stay keep our per pupil spending from FY twenty four to F one Y twenty five under the ten percent, <coughs> then your equalized tax rate can't go up more than five, meaning we were able to we were able to combat the yield that way. The uh, yield is figured in, in your equalized tax rate. The last thing is the CLA. And if you remember to that, that, that Act 127 sheet I put out and we color-coded what's in our control, what's not in our control, the CLA is not in our control. And so the, you know, when we're looking at things like 8%, that would mean that, you know, we would have to combat that by dropping taxes by 8%. And, you know, for us to do that, you're typically looking at us um, decreasing budgets by quite a bit, unless you're a district that gained tons of tax capacity. And the only district that really gained enough to possibly look at, at that would have been White River Unified District. And we'll meet and talk that through next week with them. Yeah, and that's kind of grim. Uh, the other thing, though, is the new... Uh, what do you call it? The assessments uh, are um, equalized uh, formula for equalizing student costs. And uh, we haven't seen that yet. And uh, have we? Oh, yeah. Your last budget had those new numbers run through it. Long-term <laughs> weighted average. average daily membership. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll go back and I thought we were still waiting for those. Mm -mm. 
We're, we they're not finalized. Those. We're on version four. So the budget that you'll see for your meeting next week will be version four of the long-term weighted average. But yeah, well, we've been using those numbers. Yeah. Under the new formula. Yep. Our <laughs> new tax sheet. So really at this point, <clears throat> our budgets are what our budgets are. No, I mean, we're no, none of you are putting your budgets to bed yet, right? I mean, we're going to come to you based on what we last talked about, and we're going to say to you, here's where your tax rate is now with the CLA. And you're going to have to decide, like, all right, where do, how do we feel with this? If you're at, if you're benefiting from the 5% cap already, meaning what we control with the equalized tax rate, right, what we are spending, all right, prior to CLA, we will have to do, we'll let you know what, what type of cuts we would have to do, but they would have to be deep cuts. And an example I can give you right now is that we have a district in the SU whose budget is up just over 3%, not much. Bottom line budget's up just over 3%, and because the CLA has dropped so much, they're looking at tax rates that are up over 20 cents. So they would have to cut to get those down like 400000 from this current year's budget. Andrew? Um, so everything else being equal, well, which of course they're not, usually if the CLA goes up, that means the yield would go, like if the CLA is up everywhere, the yield would go down because they'd be generating more revenue for a given equalized tax rate. Do you know when they were generating the current yield that they put out, if they'd fully take into account how much the CLA was going up? In which case- the CLA went down, down, not up. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like the amount of revenue that they would bring in because of the CLA levels what I meant by it going up. So is well, the there any CLA, chance that... The CLA is not supposed to ensure that we collect enough taxes for the Ed Fund. I will just tell it what I will say to... Well, but, you know, if they need to generate $60 million for the tax, uh, for the Ed Fund, and then they set the yield at what they think they're going to need to have it at to bring that in, and the CLA influences how much they actually get, so... Well, I think, yes, so... Andrew, I think we're we're thinking similarly. What I would say to you is the yield, I think what they've realized is the yield's really not going to help increase what they collect in taxes because of the five percent the five percent cap. Right. And so in order to collect what they need for taxes, they could diversify what they the revenue is into the Ed Fund, or possibly they took a really hard look at CLAs. Yeah. Okay. So there's no chance of it. Being more generous than what it currently is, probably. I don't see it. Yeah, I will say what I'm seeing is tax rates coming in now similar to what the governor was talking about. Not in every district, but certainly in some of our districts. So I don't, yeah, I, I wanted to talk this through with with all of you. I'm going to put information out now tomorrow and encourage board members to reach out to Terrorize so we can walk you through this stuff. Um, and then we'll keep, you know, again, just because we said we hope to adopt a budget for some of your districts in the next two weeks, we, we really don't, we really have until the end of January. So if we need to keep working and having meetings to get this where we want it to be dialed in wise, that's what we're going to do. But what I, what I will hope the takeaway is for some of you is that so, in some of our districts, our CLAs have dropped so much that I'm, there's not, that we're going to have higher taxes than what we've been accustomed to. Yeah. Yeah. We're, I saw that number. That's, that's frightening. I mean, we were. I mean, yeah. I mean, it used to be, well, uh, you know, I've been building budgets now for for going on 15 years, and 
uh, usually like in the 80s on a COA, we would think was low. Yeah. We're seeing in the 60s. Uh, I, looked at, I looked at Stockbridge, 68, or maybe a little under that. Your district yes. might have been one of the ones I was talking about. Uh, huge. Chelsea was yeah. 69. Little, that's just... Um, and Tumbridge's wasn't a lot better. Yeah, I, um, reading the uh, Weekly Standard, they had um, letters from our senators, uh, Windsor County senators, and they were talking about their priorities for uh, this uh, legislative year. And not one of them mentioned school funding and, and uh, the, the impact uh, of this on, on the education of our children. They, they kind of, as a footnote, they said, I know, by the way. So... Um, Seems that we all have to work through our organizations and and separately to get the word out that this is huge. They were talking about uh, global warming, which is real. They talked about flood relief, flood relief for our communities that got zapped. Um, so I mean, they're talking about real uh, issues. Housing is huge, um, but this affects the outcome educational outcomes of the future of the state. That's our children. So. Sounds like we've got some work to do. Yeah, I mean, I would say to you, like, I, I haven't been talking about the CLA as much because some of us were already so low. And, and like I said, like, often people will reappraise towns even after it gets under 80, and some of you were right, already under 80. Um, so I didn't see it bottoming out as much as it has bottomed out. I know I've been talking about the yield a lot. I knew that they could just set that. I did not see the CLAs across the state all dropping by that much. And again, you all received this information from the VSBA. Yeah, they emailed it this afternoon. And so just take a look and you'll see from 20, from, you know, FY um, 22 to 23 that it, it, almost every town has dropped significantly. Any other questions about that, guys? What else you got, Jamie? <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. Um, so, uh, in regards to the legislative session, um, I do think, I mean, I do believe, I do, as far as the VPA, the, the VSA, the, and the Vermont School Board Association, that... Um, that they have been doing a much better job of coordinating their efforts in regards to what they are discussing and lobbying for um, in Montpelier. And, you know, I think priorities, certainly for that group, I know at the VSA anyways, is um, education financing in Act 127. Um, you know, I think a majority of superintendents have spotted concerns about this for a while. See, um, And so there's that. There's the, the other piece to this um, in regards to Carson v. Macon. Um, was, there was a bill that came out of the House, if you remember, last year in regards to independent schools collecting public funds. Uh, that got to the Senate, and it just, it, after a crossover, it never was taken up by the Senate. I suspect that there will be some momentum again based on this recent um, suit that was brought from Mid-Vermont Christian towards some uh, neighboring districts and the Vermont Principals Association and the Agency of Education in regards to ed funding um, and that they have a right to public dollars, um, even though they haven't met some of the current standing criteria from the Vermont State Board of Education in regards to accepting those public dollars. I suspect that that will go to the Vermont Supreme Court um, and then certainly possibly even to the U.S. Supreme Court um, in regards to that. I, my, I don't know if that means that the Senate will reconsider taking up law um, to deal with that or not. So that's one. The other one to know is that um, my sense is, is that PCBs 
um, across the state that there are uh, numerous schools coming back with uh, rates that are above the threshold. Um, our, we've, ha we've had uh, Bethel and Royalton assess prior. They were under the threshold. The most recent schools we had tested is Rochester Stockbridge. We're waiting on those results. Um, and I, why I say I think that that needs to be taken up is that my sense is that there's not enough funding that's been put away for remediation in order to um, deal with that um, based on the bill that they passed last year, is that there's going to be some, some more needed funding um, to deal with remediation of PCBs um, across the state. So that's another bill to just that we need to be paying attention to. That's all I got for now. All right. Thank you, Jamie. Hi. I don't think I have uh, anything uh, much to add to the report. Um, there is an, uh, the, just bring your attention to, we, there was a, some slight adjustments to our board meeting calendar of reports. Uh, due to some changes in the when the assessments are happening in the spring, um, such that our spring academic benchmark window moved from April to May, so that it wouldn't be at the same time as the state testing, and so therefore those reports will come to you in June. Um, and uh, for those really paying attention to the detail, the ninth and tenth graders who take the fast bridge assessments, they'll be actually taking those both in February, not in January and February, um, again, to avoid um, some exam, uh, making sure we have some space between uh, the exams at the end of the semester uh, and these um, universal kind of screeners that we are doing. So that that is what I have. I, I also, um, like Jamie, was with uh, uh, our faculty yesterday with um, Dr. Van Lent um, and had the opportunity to attend um, a couple of the different sessions and it was really it was um, the calendar worked well to have it was a great day to be with faculty as they got ready for students coming back and um, I think it was just a high level of uh, learning together um, being really intentional around their planning thinking about kind of resetting expectations and um, each of the buildings did the thing like you know the the activities that they really needed to do um, based on where they were with the year so it was a really successful day and I just think it's always important to, to emphasize that because uh, we do know that you know having a day um, where fa families need to figure out their their child care can be hard um, and these are but they are really valuable for our teachers to be really ready for the students coming back and meet their needs so we appreciate all of our families. Nice. Thank you. Any questions, Rhonda? All right. Thank you very much. Um, Director of Special Services. Oh, Annette's um, not here tonight uh, due to a, a family thing. And so you have a report in hand. And I'm more than happy between Rhonda and I to entertain any questions folks might have. Any questions for um, Nett's report? Oh, okay. Kara. Hi, everyone. You have my report and outlines what's happening in the business office in addition to budgets for the month of January. In addition to that, you have as an attachment to your original packets our annual financial management questionnaire which provides to you who does what at the SU level, at the treasurer level. So I'll answer any questions there. Um, if there are any otherwise, I do need you to accept that and authorize Kathy to sign it on behalf of the SU board. That's the correct one, yep. That's for action a little bit. Oh, perfect. Okay. Okay, any questions for Tara? So under action items, we're going to approve this in a little bit. Um, that was my question. You know, we're approving this as a as a full board, not as a local board. Correct. It's full board. Okay. Thanks. All right. And Ray, you're up. Thanks. As I uh, try to think back to uh, three weeks ago, give or take. Um, so in my uh, monthly report, updates on EduClimber and uh, our second year of our um, SU-wide elementary report card. 
and some uh, projects we did with uh, Title IV funding. And then we're still waiting a final uh, update from NESDAQ about population projections. And unless there are any questions about that or anything else in my department, I want to jump over to the uh, enrollment ADM and tuition report. And uh, the only actual update um, since that report came out is that our uh, ADM actually went up two points. Uh, excuse me, our ADM went up two numbers to 1695 and the points went up to 1671. Now, when, uh, when you hear Tara and Jamie talk about long-term weighted average ADM and the significant increase there has been in some uh, districts, that relates to the, uh, the individual weights. Um, so sparsity or how rural an area is, uh, English language learners, uh, national school lunch program eligibility, and despite the difficult CLA, uh, though those benefited many of our districts. And I would be happy to uh, answer any questions relating to this report. Yeah, a couple. Um, so, Ray, the, the new formula, the weighing formula, um, you're saying you applied it and it, and it impacts the, the ADM, both the count and points? So, uh, yeah, the, the ADM, average daily membership, yep. is, is the number of our students, so to speak, yeah. right? doesn't include students who, for example, tuition to the high school because yep. their ADM flows back to the town they come from. So if we have a student joining us from uh, Pittsfield, will be my example. Um, the ADM is just a, a number based on when those students were with us for that specific window. And it's the, uh, the weights that are applied to that afterwards to become the LTW ADM, which replaces equalized pupils. So in prior years, there was some uh, adjustment for the age of the student, the grade that they were in. This year, there are just more factors that are adjusted. Okay. And the numbers that reflect this new weighing are what? Where I'm, I'm staring at them. Um, uh, you don't have any of those in front of you tonight. Okay. But the results of those are embedded or not embedded? That's this why I got confused. This is pure how many yep. kids you have yep. in your district. Yep. Real bodies. Yep. That's what this is tonight. Okay. So this report from last month comes out before those numbers are official. Uh, it's version four from yesterday, today. Yeah, last yep. Uh, not yet final of long-term weighted average. But, uh, sorry. So well, you, you sh uh, it's been relatively consistent version one, two, and three. There was a slight dip at two, but three and four have been the same long-term weighted average numbers. So will we have an update once we got them? Yeah. Yeah, you've been getting them in your, they're on your tax sheet. Every yeah, and I, and, I, and I please excuse me. No, that's all right. Um, we'll show them to you. Absolutely yeah, yeah. Um, blind on this, so I'm going to go back and do my homework. But and, and and we'll send them to you so that you you understand the, what, what they are for Rochester Stockbridge. Yeah, because I thought we were on the initial projections. That was one place where you Stockbridge get, you, was going to really be helped. Well, you gained some students, and everyone did, but the drop in the yield. Undid some of that gain, so they dropped the yield so much that yeah. that it, it undid a lot of that tax capacity, which is what I said in my letter mm -hmm. to the community December first. Like some of the tax capacity we thought we were gaining has been undone. But these these are your real number of kids in your building or your district. The other distinction is, so this number is down slightly from last year. It's a two-year weighted average Yeah. to go into long-term weighted. As the base number. Right. So not at all complicated. The uh, Just so the boards don't, I mean, the, the biggest benefit, uh, the, the districts that have benefited the most 
in regards to their long-term weighted average daily membership, um, thus far, the biggest gains we've seen have been um, in First Branch, White River Unified District, and in our Rochester Stockbridge, you have gained some. Yeah. Um, the problem that we had is that you did not gain as many pupils from FY24 to FY25 as First Branch and White River Unified District has, and part of that reason they've gained so much is that um, their free and reduced lunch numbers have increased significantly from FY24 to FY25. Um, 25, and a big reason for that is I think that actually our free and reduced lunch numbers across the SU now are, are um, much more accurate because of direct serve via Medicaid data that the state's using now. Okay. But these, these numbers here, it's important for the board to know, this is what the agency starts with. And then they start adding in the, the weighted factors from there based okay. on what that each one of these pupils, their grade level, whether or not they qualify for free and reduced lunch, whether or not they're considered uh, ESL. Um, so th that's when those weights start to apply, is after this raw data. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions on that stuff, guys? Okay, policy committee update. Who wants to roll with it? Sorry I wasn't there, guys, tonight. I caught the tail end. Do I have a taker? I, I can talk to what we did or frankly didn't do. We, we uh, looked at one policy, uh, the alcohol and drugs in the workplace um, policy, and uh, discussed a couple of um, important sort of splitting points uh, or road ways in which the road splits and um, took the uh, the consensus of the group and we need to come back with another draft of the policy for consideration. Um, so there's more work to be done on this policy. Um, the second thing that we talked about is the harassment and discrimination policy. And we talked about it for about two seconds because the long, the short of it is our mm -hmm. lawyer is drafting or, or giving us a draft that we will have um, uh, in, uh, in before the next meeting um, for us to consider. That's all we did. All right. Thank you, Eric. Any questions, guys? Okay. Um, so we have two um, uh, action for policies, um, revisions to policy B1 substitutes, B4 drug and alcohol testing for transportation employees, and B7 tobacco prohibition. Um, you want us to take action on those tonight? Mm -hmm. So we need to take action on those three policies tonight. Um, does Stacy or Eric, does, I just, do you, either one of you want to just comment on what we worked on or for these three? These three are so far in the past. Or I, I can do it if you. These are mostly language, right? It's pretty much cleaning up the introductory sentence uh, for the policy so that it doesn't state this is the policy of. Um, that it just gets to the policy. And um, we dealt with uh, pronouns, and we, um, there might have been a little language cleanup or typo if there was, but that's it. Yeah, there were no real substantive changes to any of the three policies, as I recall. Um, it was all only a matter of language cleanup. Right. Do I have a motion to approve the three policies? I move to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second, it's Michael. Thank you, Michael. All right, so the motion's on the table to approve and accept revisions to policy B1 
substitutes before drug and alcohol testing for transportation employees, and B7 tobacco prohibition. Is there any discussion on those policies? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Are there any nays? Aye. Are there any nays? Hearing none, policies passed. Um, Bright River Valley Supervisory Union 2324 Board Goals. Um, I worked with Andrew, Stacy, and Bill, and we came up with some board goals that you should have found in your packets. Did everybody have a chance to take a look at them? Do I have feedback, thoughts, questions? guys are an easy crowd tonight. Kathy, Kathy, it's Michael. Could they, Ray, could you scroll back down or back up to number one on, thank you, on um, goal three of first bullet, re review test scores and achievement data. I mean, that's the basis for that whole document, Jamie, that the um, VSA is, or VSBA is sending out to the AOE and the State Board of Education. I mean, how, I, I know we need that data, but it's it's not been reliable. It hasn't been consistent. It's not been timely. Can we actually use that as a goal, Kathy? Well, this isn't just the state data. It's also our track my progress or whatever other um, assessments that we're doing. Yeah. Not just the state stuff. And it doesn't have to just be at, at you know, I guess it is just the educational data for that one. Yeah, I think we were looking at all of our ways of tracking it, Michael. Um, yeah, no, I mean, that, that makes sense. It's just that it's, it's been quite a frustration and it's tricky to respond. Well, it's a separate conversation, but it's tricky responding to the public when you're talking about a state system that's so flawed. Agreed. Yeah. yeah Michael, good point. That's one uh, reason um, on the agenda is uh, whether or not uh, our SU should uh, join forces with other school um, districts across the state to form a task force to try to identify more clearly and forcefully the weaknesses, shortcomings of our State Board of Education and State Department of Education. And one of the, the problems is we're not getting viable, useful educational performance data from the state. What we do have, and I was in talking to other um, board chairs and vice chairs, um, is that uh, we're blessed that we've got a very good measurement system that we've been using for over time that gives us uh, solid information relative to the performance of our students' academic performance, um, and also uh, in a format that can give real-time support to our teachers and our principals so that they can fine-tune the individual approaches to the children so that they can, um, they can move along. So, what we have here on goal three is of the strategic plan as well. That's a huge thing. We, we're basically pledging ourselves that we're going to monitor that and determine how we're doing. And just a comment on the board goals in general. Um, you know, we have our strategic plan and we have the supervisory union or superintendent goals. We kind of have a bunch of different things. But the point of this document is what are we as a board going to do to further kind of those overall organizational goals? So that's one of the lenses to kind of look at this through. And, you know, if people have ideas for what we should be doing as a board, like this is where we want to put them in and 
and try and, you know, abide by them and whatnot. If I might just add another thing, what gives me uh, confidence is that we've, the document in front of you, the draft, is very ambitious. I'd suggest, again, there are a number of boards in other districts or other unions that uh, might not even have goals, never mind a means to measure them. We've got ambitious goals, but part of the, the flavor of this is that we've got an administrative team led by uh, our CEO and uh, his administrative team that is in tune to this and already doing a lot of this. So it isn't like, ah, surprise, uh, January, they've got five months to go after some of the things as a board that we want to do. The, the, these things, a lot of these things are already happening. The other thing is the goal about uh, the superintendent's, um, or is it, uh, negotiate the superintendent's contract, that's already done. Um, and if that took, uh, I suggest under Kathy and Sarah's leadership, a lot of work. But uh, we're already doing a lot of this right now. Um, and I just want you to share that sense of, what's the term, confidence that we can do it, even though they're challenging and we're not going to necessarily do everything, uh, but we can do it and, and we're already doing it and underway. Um, yeah. Any more discussion on the goals, guys? Any more ideas? We didn't want it for action. We didn't want it for action. No, because uh, this canceled. All right. And you wouldn't have met. We wouldn't have been and able Matt, to. It, it, you, that group really finalized these since this meeting was canceled. I mean, I mean, I think that gives a little bit more time for feedback too, because we can warn it and adopt these at our January meeting at the meeting. at our yeah. end of the, and we're meeting again in a few weeks. So, if people Sometimes I like to like go back and think about, oh, this would have been a good idea, or how to question. So maybe if you think of things, email Andrew, Stacy, myself, or Bill, and we'll do our best to answer. If you have more ideas for this, that would be great. Any more discussion on it? No? Good? Okay. Um, draft number three, the 2425 budget. Possible action. So you're all really excited to see this after all my positive news. <laughs> you warmed us right up to it, Jamie. Good job. Know, Good job. Well, on a positive note, the assessments that are reflected in this budget are what are reflected in your budgets. So. Oh. <laughs> Uh, so to go over the SU budget, I mean, the, the biggest change that you've seen since November, remember you were going to see this in December, um, was that the data manager position that we have been talking about has been removed from this budget. Um, and it was removed from this budget uh, mostly around just my sense of some concern uh, from some of our district boards in regards to making certain we stayed under that 10% uh, cap. Uh, of their equalized pupil, um, long-term weighted pupil from one year to the next so that we would cap that equalized tax rate, which, um, frankly, many of our districts are benefiting from prior to the CLA. Um, and so it was to try to decrease the SU budget to help uh, districts manage that. Um, and then uh, additionally from there, we played around a little bit in regards to um, some of our line items, um, like under the superintendent's office, you'll see some reductions, um, like contract to service and legal fees based on just prior years, um, expenses. Tara, do you want to go? What else? Yep. So I corrected the community services. That's our, uh, that was the benefits That's weren't reflective some. of the 0.5 FTE. And then we made some adjustments to the stipends, leadership and coaching stipends under curriculum. And that are the primary adjustments that Jamie already discussed. So we've got the supervisor union down to an increase of $168,075, which equates to an 8.5%.
And we were over 10 prior. Yeah. And then the third page in your packet is the assessments that you all are seeing in your budget drafts. And, and Terry, I think down. it would be good. We've got um, several members that are just in their first or second year. Just walk them through how we do our assessments. Sure. So our assessments are done at the SU central office level based on your average daily membership and enrollment. And they are the average of the two, and then we take it and divide it over the entire SU enrollment. So that's how it's determined. So obviously, if your average daily membership and your enrollment has increased, then you will see an increase in your percentage of the assessment. And that's not arbitrary, just so everyone knows, the SU board adopt that. In 2015. As their approach to how we assess. Yep. That, that ha by statute, the SU has to have a formula. Yep. So this will give you a sense of what each, what you all pay percentage-wise as an SU assessment. And then it'll show you based on the proposed budget what that assessment amount has changed by. And then the green column is the difference between last year and this year. Any questions on that, how that works? Clear as mud, right guys? Do you guys have any questions about the budget? I guess I have one question. To what extent is the phasing out of federal support impacting us? Is, do you have a, a, on, on, this, on our SU budget? Um, we haven't really been leveraging. You know, so I know one of your goals, uh, Jamie, was that we're not walking up this off this plank, and they removed the plank, and we've got some sharks down there. So it should be fairly – but that – is impact us in some ways. The only the only added uh, cost you're really seeing that's not being offset by yep. revenue that was prior was our our community school coordinator. Okay. Because we had a three year grant for community schools, um, and so that's the only position that all of a sudden now you're that's that you're paying for that was grant covered. Yeah, and I think that's an extremely important position. <clears throat> Thank you. But it wasn't like all of a sudden we brought in uh, Esther position that had been being funded. Okay. All right, guys. Um, potentially take action on this before we move to SPED because they're two separate budgets. Or how would you like to handle that, Jamie? Maybe we time. Let's let's do both. Do both? You, yeah, and you guys can decide what you want to do. It's okay. Yep. So we're going to talk about the special ed budget next. So I don't recall. That we changed anything in the special ed expenditure budget. The only thing that changed in the SPED budget was we got an adjustment for our revenue. So that's the only change that you'll see in this is based on the, the revenue. And so that's reflective in your assessment. So same, same functionality except for the special education assessment is purely based on the average daily membership. And again, that was decided by the yep. board. That's, that's something that when we did, they decided there how they would assess that. And that's why you'll see that the percentage is a little different in special ed yep. versus the essentially the rest of the SU office.
All right. Any questions, guys? Uh, I mean, I'll just say, um, in regards to the special ed budget, I, I just, and that's not here, but this is really, when we talk about our multi-tiered system of supports um, and all the work we're doing around universal instruction and strengthening our curricular documents and providing target interventions, and Annette working hard with Onda and Michaela and our principals and our teachers to ensure that like we are doing early intervention and responding to intervention. I will tell you that one of the things I, I hope we really celebrate as a supervisory union is the fact that our, our SU budgets in regards to special education have been going up at a very sustainable rate. As, I will put this, our SU budgets in regards to how much they've been increasing over the last three years up against anyone in the state. I know of some SU special ed budgets that are going up over $2 million this year. So I just want to give some perspective to the board that all that work we've been doing around early intervention and things of that nature is paying off. Um, because I, I, am in, I personally am incredibly proud that we're able to service our students with fidelity, get the supports they need to them, have right. intensive programming for them, and do it in a way that I believe is very fiscally uh, sustainable. Um, and so I just, I really wanted to highlight that tonight. Um, there's some huge celebrations of the work we've been doing around early intervention, investing in pre-K, investing in intervention in pre-K, that I believe you can directly then look and look at your special ed budget and see that that is benefiting um, all of our kids, but then resulting in us not um, essentially having to remediate after we've already failed students. Yeah. Um, and which all the research shows costs significantly more. So I, I just wanted to, to just point that out to everyone. And keep, keep doing so, because some of us have faulty memories, uh, but that's phenomenal. Um, that's um, less than inflation by my measure, so 3.18 percent, that's, um, and we're doing it, that's a demonstration, I think, that we're doing it, we're not, Absolutely. we're not looking the other way on this thing at all, thank you. Wow. All right, so that's our special ed and our regular budget, any questions, discussion, suggestions, changes, before we move this to a vote? Motion to approve the budgets. So I have to have the specific dollar amount in the motion. Okay. For each one, you have to do them as. Okay. You can do Are we one ready motion for motion, guys? But say both budgets. All right. Uh, do you want to make a motion? Um, Chair sorry. will give you the magic numbers. Yeah, we've got. Um, we got the. I'll just give the motion, though. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, the motion is to accept the fiscal year 24-25 budget for White River Valley Central Office in the amount of $2,146,501 in the special education budget for fiscal year 2024-2025 in the amount of $8,031,312. No, I shall move that. Do I have a second? Thanks. Is it Sylvia? I'll second. Thank you, Sylvia. Is there any discussion on the budget? On the motion? All right, so we'll do a roll call vote. Oh, Eric? So here is, um, a, I think, a question and a comment on the approval of the budget. I understand that as boards, we have the responsibility to approve a budget. It is incredibly difficult to approve a budget when we don't know how we're going to pay for it. Um, and uh, my perspective is that there is a little bit of the cart before the horse 
kind of exercise that we're undertaking, not because we shouldn't undertake the exercise, but because we're being placed in this position to um, act in this fashion. Um, I, um, I am feeling like it is irresponsible to approve a budget when we don't understand what the implications of that budget are going to be to an individual taxpayer. Um, that's, uh, that's the way that I'm feeling right now. And I just, I wanted to make that comment um, before we, we take a vote. But we do kind of know, we know what our assessment is because it's been in each of our budgets that's gone out. I, I, I hear that, I hear that. But the letter that we got um, this afternoon puts into significant question what that's going to mean for the individual taxpayer in each of our towns. Um, and as a result, we, we don't understand whether we should be um, engaging in a incredible uh, you know, budget cutting spree because we have no money um, or whether we ought to be going in a different direction. So I appreciate that we have to do this. I, I am not feeling confident um, uh, that, that we are headed in a sustainable direction. I would agree with that, Eric. And I do understand where you're coming from. I don't. I do know we need to approve our SU budget in order for each of our individual boards to move forward with their budgets. So we we have a kind of a. We have to get from point A to point B. Um, definitely not with a lot of help from the state this year. <laughs> um, so. Is there any other discussion or suggestions or talk about the budget? Jamie, can I ask you a question? It's Michael. Yeah. Um, so, I, if, Eric, if I, if I understand you correctly, then it what's happening here a little bit is in a time of incredible uncertainty in terms of tax rate and increases and what's going to actually end up happening to our individual district budgets, we will be pre-approving, if you will, approving in advance um, the special the special ed budget and the SU budget, which doesn't allow us to go back and change or manipulate that should things really go to heck in a handbasket. Eric, is that your point? Uh, yes, and I will add that when I look at budgeting, right, I, I look, um, or, or the overall financial health of an institution, I don't just look at what I am expecting to spend next year, but how I'm going to pay for it. And the how I'm going to pay for it part of this discussion is, uh, is missing by virtue of um, this letter that we got today because we cannot tell um, any of our taxpayers right now what adopting this budget will mean to them on a personal basis, period. We can't. We just simply can't. Gotcha. I, I argue with that a little bit, Eric, because for most of you, you're under the 10% the, cap. And in order, unless you're telling me as a board member that you plan to gut programming locally, there's, there's not much that our local districts are going to be able to do to combat the CLA. Because so, so that gets back to the conversation that we were having earlier, Jamie, where I, could, I, I, I still don't understand what the CLA does to the 5% cap. Nothing. The five, so the CLA is, it is the state's way of making certain that someone who owns property in Rochester and owns property in Stockbridge, even in the same district, that they are paying their educational tax taxes on properties that are valued appropriately. So the CLA ad adjusts to make certain that a property in Rochester that was originally valued at 150 but should be appraised at 300 is paying at the 300 rate, essentially. Which means that our tax rates will be impacted by the common level of appraisal.
correct? Correct. Yes. And I'm telling you Which that, meant? and I'm telling you that in most of our towns, there's not a budget that I could stand behind and put forward to you to combat it because it's dropped so much. Could you repeat that? I'm sorry. That for some of our districts, your CLAs drop so much that if you wanted a flat tax rate, that I couldn't stand behind a budget that I was putting forward to you. So for an example, I did an exercise today in a district. Their CLAs dropped so much that their expenditure budget would have to go down by $500,000 in order to have a flat tax rate. Yeah. Sorry, the Andrew, other point, you, you had a comment, yeah. Yeah, the other point I would make is if your town happened to have done an assessment last year and it made it so that the CLA, you know, was 100% instead of 80%, like people would still be, you know, it wouldn't, it would look like the tax rate was going down, but it doesn't impact the amount people are paying because their assessed values are higher. So the CLA percent isn't really something that's under our control it's based on property values and property values going up isn't really something that we can control or have should really have an impact on what we're doing in my mind because it's kind of separate from it it does have to do with how it gets paid and how what the rate people are paying but you know if if we did an assessment it makes it look like tax rates go down but they don't as far as what people actually pay so it's not really something that i don't know i i mean you pay attention to it and it matters but i don't think like really we should be looking at the equalized tax rate and not the common level of appraisal rate because it's kind of you know it, you don't have it control. Does, does have that extra kind of factor right it's not something we can control and you know, it can arbitrarily go up and down and it doesn't really have anything to do with what we're doing as a, as a district or supervisory union or whatever. Understood. Jamie, I'm going to, I'm going to ask another question here. So to, to, to try and get back to my point. So I'm in Sharon, we, we go before the voters they're not happy ultimately with, you know, I'm just making this up, right? With what we come forward with, with the budget and they want us to cut. I can imagine as you can um, certain criticism because we've already voted for $10 million in, in expenditures with these two budgets, right? So we can't go back and make any adjustments there. They'd all have to come out of local budgets. Is yeah. that correct? And we're and we have to adopt an SU budget before you go to your voters with a budget. Uh huh. Because that assessment is what is in your budget and has to be approved at the central office and special education level. Well, it it is. I actually I would have to dig into it. I believe by statute we have to have a budget approved. I, I can go pull it if you want me to. <laughs> before we, before we finalize our district budgets. Yeah. So this order has to happen. Like we can't yeah. finalize district budgets and then adjust because potentially board. And the reason for that, Michael, would be, you know, boards could possibly be budgeting to deficit spend. Like that number has to be real. Yeah, and I, and please don't misunderstand me. No, I, I think hear you. You, you know me well I enough. I want to clarify that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not suggesting that the SU or special ed is padding their budget in any way at all. It's just that I, I'm literally listening to town members, constituents who are, you know. The, the only thing that's, that is tight on this is that essentially within the next three weeks, we need to approve this, but these budgets, these two, and I need to have four year districts approve. And so what I would be looking for from the board tonight is if you weren't to approve this, I need some real direct feedback on what you need it to be to finalize it because we need to have this approved before the other four can even take action. Yeah, and I, I'll, I'll only speak for myself here, but I, I wouldn't even know where to start with that given the fact that I can't, 
you know, I, I don't know um, where this funding is going to, you know, this model is going to go this year. Um, I can't anticipate. We haven't had the full discussion at the district yet about our own budget. So, you know, I'd need to give you, as you've asked us, Jamie, I would need to give you a number and say you'd have to reduce this by X amount. And that's based on no good, reliable data at this point. Right. So I, I can't ask you to do that. That would be disingenuous. It would be, you know, it just I just find is that we're sort of between a rock and a hard spot, particularly this year, because revenue is so unknown and dicey. And and it isn't just education that's going to be looking for dollars this year. No. So I um, I'm talking in circles. I apologize. I, I, I could I, I couldn't look at this and tell you what to do with it. I, I you know, you're at a what? Three point um, three point one eight you know, increase in special ed, in special yeah. ed, you know, I know what you're dealing with in special ed, given, given what you're dealing with, that's a very, very small increase. Um, yeah. I mean, I think if, as a board, if you weren't going to take action tonight, then you have to somehow commit that we're going to come back together after a certain date. And for example, first branch in Stratford, the earliest date we got on the calendar was the 15th. So if, if those, if certain particular boards want to look at this again, then just know we're going to have to look at that, commit to a full board meeting shortly after, and then get those other district boards back together again swiftly. Yeah. That could be the strategy. All right. Well, we do have a vote on the floor right now. Is there any other discussion on it? Um, <clears throat> just moving back to this point, if we did want to ingest this for a while and come back to it, would that vote need to be uh, rescinded or we would just, would we vote it down? You vote it down. Yeah, you got a motion. Yeah, yeah you got a motion, so you got to vote it down. Jamie, do you feel that this budget you've put forward um, is... Uh, appropriate for what you're trying to do and move our district forward, but um, that it is pared down as much as it could be. Yeah. I mean, if you were asking me, I think we need a data manager. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't have added it last month if I didn't think we didn't need it. And I've got administrators that are not happy that I removed it. Well, it's, it's in there as a stipend though, isn't it? There's a stipend, but we were looking at a full-time data manager to help make certain that, that we were lessening the load on our SU office staff and making certain that our teachers had real-time academic and behavioral data they could use. That is, that is already a, a cut that I made that I just felt like we needed to make. I will tell you that, um, to speak candidly, I don't think everyone necessarily supported that cut. Um. I certainly understand the concerns about kind of the order of the way things happen. I do think it's just the way it is structurally. You know, um, it's kind of the side effect of us all having individual district budgets and having to come together as a group to approve a budget separately from that. And that has to happen before all the individual district budgets happen. So, you know, we're kind of going to be in the situation where we're having to approve before we know exactly what our district budgets are doing. Anyway, you know, like the districts that are aiming for a March vote certainly have more information probably than the districts that do May or something. No, you're all pretty much in the same place, actually, Andrew. We've been, we've been working okay. with you and the other ones at the same timeline. Well, I mean, in that case, we should have a pretty good idea of what's happening in our individual districts. Um, but speaking from our timeline, like we're supposed to have a meeting next week to finalize our budget because we're, um, you know, we need to have our mailers go out in, at the end of the month in order to end the warning at the end of the month to um, to get it out in time for our town meeting or school board meeting. So, you know, if we are going to push this back, it's really going to put pressure on our calendar as far as getting everything that needs to happen for that to happen. So I think know, everybody for March is in that boat. 
What's that? I think everybody who's got a, a, a vote in March needs to get this, this done rather sooner yeah. than later. And so if people have specific things that they'd like to see, I'm sure we could discuss that. But, you know, I think we need to, rather than just saying, let's wait and see, let's have specific suggestions or let's approve it or, you know, yeah. Derek? Yeah, I just, I want to be clear. I don't have a, my issue is not with the budget. My issue is with my inability to forecast how I'm going to pay for it. That that's that's where I'm having some dissonance here, because it, because I don't know how I'm going to pay for it. I don't know how uh, reasonable or unreasonable the hikes and the budget are. Said so differently, if all of a sudden I I come to realize that I have a one million dollar short war. In, in revenue, th then I, then this budget sounds incredibly unreasonable, um, and we would be directing Jamie and others to cut the budget to meet the one one million dollar deficit. And I just I don't know what our revenue is going to look like. I don't, but I think you know we are kind of setting our revenue by setting the tax rates. You know, like if you if you have some sort of cap as to what you're willing to allow the tax rate to go up to, then you have a, a limit, but, you know, uh, agree. It's not like, uh, yeah, yeah, Andrew, I, I absolutely agree. The, 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 the difficulty is that as I am sitting here right now, I can't translate this budget into what the tax rate will look for our town. I can't say a one dollar increase in the budget equals a one cent increase on the tax rate for the town, and I can't do that because um, the 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 new information has tweaked um, the tax sheet for or will have an effect on the tax sheet in our, in our town. That's that's the that's the the stress that I'm I'm dealing with. My sense is, Eric, and if, I, I can't run those numbers right here, is that because you're benefiting from the 5% cap, that you approving any increase is probably not going to impact your tax rate because it's capped at that 5% for your equalized tax rate. What's going to impact your tax rate is the CLA. But also with this budget, um, with our assessments, to really make a difference in our individual assessments, um, it would have to probably be changed significantly to have any more than a you know one or two percent change in in our assessments. I was actually thinking that what 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 was the amount of the data person Jamie? What was that adding to the budget that you pulled out? Uh, with salary and all benefits in, it was. You know, we always budget for like if they take a family plan, which a family plan now is. I want to say it's like a hundred, just shy of a hundred. Just shy just of a hundred. Just shy of a hundred grand. I don't have that budget printed in my book. I mean, because the family plan's up to what? Twenty nine thousand four hundred almost. Personally, I'd like to see us put that position back in because it feels like aligning with our board goals and everything we just talked about and worked on is something we need. Although I know. We're also going to be battling with some tough budgets. Um, you know, I, yeah, frankly, but I think I, we're going to battle that anyway. I, I also thought, uh, just to be frank, that a important number for us at the SU level was to not have our expenditure budget over 10%. I do think, I think our voters vote, you've all heard me say this. I think they vote on lots of different things. <laughs> I think they vote on the tax rate. I think they vote on your overall expenditure budget. I, we try to educate folks, right? I, th I think some of them look at the SU budget and say that's up too much. I think everyone has a little different flavor of why they vote, yay or nay. And for some folks, I do think there are certain factors that they look at if they, and they possibly can get turned off on. And one of them is I do believe, based on just talking to constituents in the past, seeing the SU budget up over 10 could be a challenge for some mm -hmm. folk. Absolutely agree, Jamie. 
are, are we saying that um, for every dollar we cut in the SU budget, because of the CLA, the tax impact of the dollar cut isn't a dollar. It's something significantly less than that. Yeah, and, and remember, it's less than that because none of you pay a full dollar. Right? It's, it's assessed out six different ways, that dollar. Yep. That's, um, and the reason I yeah, raised that I question, it, it, it's kind of a powerful thing that, that, that we're not getting the benefit. It's far less. In other words, we have to cut maybe five times as much to get the full impact. On each district? Yes, yeah, specifically. I mean, in our smaller districts, it impacts you less, right? Sure. I mean, if you look at your assessment, you know, it, it, it runs at 39.85 and first branch is at 21.05. I mean, they're, they're the, so on for every dollar, White River Unified District is essentially paying 40 cents. And then we've got first branches covering the other, you know, yeah. 21 and then it goes from there. So essentially to have any factor on the tax rate, which is with the CLA, what we're talking about, we'd have to cut huge here and huge in our own budgets, which is something none of us, I think, are looking you know, to do. To really, uh, that's what I started with. It, because the CLA comes in after your, your, your equalized tax rate, your actual what we can control, the CLA comes in after that. And because many of us stayed under the 10% cap and we're benefiting from the 5% equalized tax rate, in order to actually make an adjustment to undo the CLA, I just gave you an example. I just ran numbers for a district that we have that's their overall expenditure budget, even with this figured in, is only at 3.8%, the budget we're going to give them next week. But in order to get their taxes flat, we would need to not go up at all, we would need to actually cut 400,000. And that's in a little district. Yeah, and I think um, before we have our, our, our school, annual school meetings, that we need to have graphics that we can explain that uh, as clearly as possible. Um, because that's really dramatic, and it kind of, and then we tell them again, but if we can tell them as clearly as possible with some examples of that, that will help the, the propensity of people having, we'll just, we'll just cut. And the key is, it's what Andrew just said, we control the equalized tax rate. We don't control what the values of people's properties are in their town. And the CLA drops to ensure that you're it's supposed to be the equalizer to ensure everyone in the state is paying on an appropriate value of their house. Just because you're not reassessed, what they say is when your CLA drops is, no, you haven't been reassessed, but your home's worth that much more. Yeah. So if Bill was going to sell his home, they're saying, well, you might have been, re been assessed at 250 eight years ago, you but, three. but you can sell it for... 354, they're saying, well, you should be paying at 354. So when we're talking about trying to adjust our budgets to combat the COA, what we're what you're asking us to do is to combat the fact that properties are worth more. That's what you're asking me to do. That we're gonna cut from kids, cut from programs in order to keep the tax rate low so that people aren't paying taxes on their actual value of their home. Andrew, did I get that right based on what how, how you? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think one way you can think of the CLA is it's a way for the state to keep towns from gaming the system by, you know, assessing lower than they should. Yeah. So, you know, it kind of makes it independent of the town's assessment um, so that you can't have one town assessing at a lower value in order to pay less into the ed fund. Um, out of curiosity, how many towns are, or which towns are 
at the five percent or yeah, five percent cap. Uh, that are, are benefiting from it. First Branch is benefiting from it. White River Unified District's benefiting from it. Stratford's benefiting from it. Sharon, their tax rate will benefit from it. And Rochester Stockbridge is actually under it. And Jihad. Will benefit. And Jihad. White River is under the the cap. Like we're not looking at a five percent. Right, you're not. You're like our son. You're not benefiting from it. Correct. But you gain for the towns, in fact, yeah. for the other towns you listed, basically approving this does nothing to the local tax rate. That's what I'm trying to say. I, I it won't change the actual actual equalized tax rate. Because we're or under the tax put another tax way, rate. put another way, cutting this wouldn't benefit their local tax rate at all. No, not unless no. they're willing to gut their budget. All right, guys. More discussion? Are we ready to call the vote? I'll raise the question, or what, what's the term for... Call the vote. You would call the vote. The vote. Yep. Call the vote. Call the vote. All right, we'll do roll call. I'll, um, I'll look, if you're in favor, say aye. Andrew? Aye. No, I did roll call. Aye. What? Amy said aye, but you, I said roll call this. Yeah, that's what I did. Andrew, say aye. You said aye. 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 Michael? Michael? Oh, aye. Amy? Aye. Eric? Aye. Stacy? Aye. Sylvia? Aye. Dustin? Aye. No. Aye. And Kathy's an I. So it passes unanimously. All right. Thank you, guys. VSBA resolution. I love you, RVC, signing on to the VSBA resolution. You want to take the lead yeah, um, at the um, Vermont School Board Association annual conference, um, one of the major agenda items was to look at um, resolutions that they wanted to put forward. Um, and one of the most important ones was the dissatisfaction and the pain and uh, hurt that each of our districts and supervisory unions are taking through inadequacies at the state's educational leadership. Uh, that means the Board of Education and um, the actual education agency itself. And in this resolution that um, is for us was that this can't go on because it's hurting the ability of the educators and the educational team uh, to feel, fulfill our moral requirement to take care of our kids and make sure that they can get the best education possible within limits. And so this resolution basically, if we join forces, is to team up with other SUs and districts um, to form a task force. And that task force would also be complemented with the Vermont uh, Superintendents Association representative, the Principals Association, the Special Education Association representatives, to come up with a um, uh, a series of recommendations that they would uh, and we would uh, forward to uh, our legislative leaders and to the administration. Uh, and sure, I think there's a real feeling out there that one a big problem is that the Board of Education and the, edu the Vermont S School Board uh, Agency has been underfunded and understaffed for years. And so we're kind of getting what uh, you know, it's 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 face it's false economy that uh, they can't do what they're set out to do, and um, if they do it right, 
we believe that it will ultimately save money for the state and the taxpayers. So this resolution says, do we want to join that effort? If we vote yes, then I assume um, somebody or people from the SU will join that task force and, uh, and see where it leads. I see there's no harm to this. I do think, uh, boy, we need better performance at the state level. Any questions? I mean, I don't, I don't dis, disagree with it. I, I can understand the frustration. Um, that's, uh, you know, to provide the governor no later than January of 25 with recommended actions means that any any action that might be taken. I mean, this is pushing this way down the road. Jamie, are, are you frustrated by that timeline? Yeah, a little. But I get I mean, they're trying to they're trying to pull a committee together to study it is my sense. Yeah. I mean, Montpelier is famous for study committees. Um, um, I'm sorry if that sounds cynical, but um, I think last year they set a record number. I mean, Jamie, if you think that this might actually lend um, or lead to some uh, positive action or response, then I would vote for it. I'm just curious. You're t I mean, obviously, you've got this in front of us. I'm assuming that you're in support. Yeah, no, when I, I mean, certainly when I read through it, I was happy to see that the group was, the VSBA was looking to take some action and just like put a call out around concerns. Um, so in that sense, um, I certainly support it. I, I'm a little curious to why, I guess they're looking just to get in front of the le next le legislative session. Um, I, I was curious about the January date, too. I don't think it means that we couldn't sign on, but emphasize that we believe it should wrap up sooner. I, I would be in support of it if, if you were willing to push that timeline. I mean, certainly the board could uh, move it with the, you know, with the revision of, you know, November 2025, and we could let them know we're signing on, but that that's our take on it. Bill, you, I feel like you're a little in, more in tune with this. Would they, when were they hoping to form this committee? Did you have a sense? I haven't. I wasn't at the conference, so I just, yeah. when I read this, I'm saying we're seeing the, the bad results or the substandard results uh, that would not be acceptable if we were in charge, quite honestly, happening at the state level again and again and again. And I personally thought that it's time for the board, our board association to team up and to articulate, be very specific about what is needed, not only for, for this governor, but future governors. Um, and uh, so it's easy for policy people saying, well, we should do generally. Well, I think we have some expertise at the state, uh, at, the, at the local levels to say, well, the, starting with X, Y, Z. Um, I mean, again, so I, I think sooner the better. I totally agree with that thought. But doing it, I think, is going to possibly, whether it's immediate or down the road, it can't help, but it can't hurt. That's kind of how I'm feeling, too. Like, it's not doing it, it seems like, seems kind of foolish. I agree with you, Michael. It doesn't, might not go very far, but it, at least it's worth, we're, I think us voting yes for it is also us saying that we see there's a problem. And maybe they'll realize the more boards that get on and get involved that that everybody views it as a problem. Yeah, I agree with that. You know what I mean? Like it's making a statement that we support it. So you need a move right, you right. need a motion? Yes. So I would move that we su that we uh, support this uh, proposal and that we ask that they push the timeline forward to expedite this as much as possible. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Okay, hey, all those in favor say aye. 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 Is there any nays? Great, right, hearing none, it's passed. Thank you guys. Um, annual, annual financial management questionnaire. So we talked about that earlier and said it would come up for so I just need a motion if you, if it is your pleasure to accept 
the financial management questionnaire, and then I'll allow you as the chair to sign it. Great, I'll do it. I'll do it. that motion. So moved. Do I have a second? I have a second. Second, second. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Are there any nays? Are there any nays? All right, hearing none, right, hearing none. Motion, motion passes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will sign off the Friday chair. chair. All right, so that puts so that us puts to us public, to comment. public comment. We don't have any public we'll comments at all. Resignation of new hires. Is there any Is there any exception? There is. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's on. It's on a, a, contract, a contract in regards, in regards to, our, to our, um, has to do with has to do with electric vehicles. vehicles. So, so, so I would ask, I would that, ask that if I Ray and Ray could just say basement. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else we need to do? Nope. Nope. So our next meeting will be Thursday, Thursday, January twenty third. Right. So we're gonna do. So we're gonna do a quick executive session. We need a motion. Okay. Okay. We need to move. Yeah. Do I have a motion to go executive session? session? Kathy, Kathy, I think, I think you meant Tuesday, Tuesday January 23rd. 23rd. What did I say? Oh. Oh. Sorry. Tuesday. 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 It's the 24th, not the 23rd. That's 2023. Cut it out. You Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's the 24th. 2020 year. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Stuff is looking at the date. I haven't done that yet. I made a real just after 2024. So far, I've been successful too. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? You do. I just don't recall who am I supposed to be. Oh, sorry. It's Ray, Tara, and I. Thank you. So moved. Second. All right. All right. So, so we're next. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're out of executive session. We need to take action. Um, we need to make a vote. Um, a vote. We need to have a vote to. Um, Is the motion to come out? Um, okay. Motion to come out of executive session, guys. So moved. So moved. All right. Second. All right. So we're out of executive session. Now, can I have a motion to reject the bid? From PXT. PXT for the electric charging stations. Infrastructure solutions. So move. Right. And second it. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Are there aye. any nays? Aye. All right. Hearing none, so moved. Thank you, guys. Mm. And we yeah. Public on. We did executive session. Return to public session. The other agenda. And our next meeting is January twenty third, twenty four, Tuesday. All right, guys. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All right, Thank bye you. guys. Thank you. 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 Thank